because they're going out to bat now. Well, good morning to the start of another weekend of Pembroke Cricket and Sydney Parade. Who are playing today now? Who are we playing? No, no, I know we're playing Balbriggan. It's Balbriggan and um, Pembroke, and Pembroke are batting first. But what cup are we in? Junior Boys Cup, it's called. Okay. Well, there you go, Junior Boys Cup. So the umpires are looking to get everybody onto the pitch quickly, bearing no consideration for the technical staff. No, they're taking everybody off the pitch. Well, this is a hell of a start. Players striding out to the middle and the umpires clearing the pitch. Ah, so they can have their picture taken. Well, there we go. One for the mantelpiece, it's just that button there. Yep. Okay, I have my walkie talkie. ASQ. ASQ. Yeah. That's all I'm doing, just marking yeah. the replays. Yeah. So we have the unusual situation today. It's a first for me, anyway. The game is being played on the junior mat due to the weather conditions. Oh no, I suppose I should leave it on really. Uh, the umpire's down at the junior mat, as you can see. It has provided some technical difficulties, some of which. I can see yeah, something. Yeah, I just was making sure that that was tight yeah. before I did anything like that. And. Ooh. Yeah. Discussions going on in the middle. We're set for a half nine start. And it appears now, finally, the players are taking the pitch. The technical difficulties include the fact that I'm now standing in the hall of the clubhouse to accommodate. And you should probably, yes, the nice big echo here. If the lads just moved a little bit to their left, we get them on screen. Go, go to your left, boys. Yes, and I spent three hours just talking to myself in the hall. Throw on the head. So, as Niall strides out to the middle, he'll be manning this camera. He'll be showing us the action pictures, and he thinks he's going to have an easy day. Meanwhile, I've been left in the hall <laughs> and can now add director to my list of marvellous tasks. Have you got a microphone on my camera? Doesn't appear so. The club coach, Claire Shillington. Done a lot of work with the youth this year, as has Bill Whaley. It does look very green down there. The umpires are just completing a lap. You can see them going around, checking that there's a boundary. Although, from what I've read, all boundaries have to be a continuous white line or a rope. Flags no longer cut the mustard, apparently. There's a decent crowd has turned up. As you can see now, they're in charge of that camera. We're down for a 9.30 start. 
It's now 9.31. Umpire's still strolling. Niall now jogging back to the hall. of this game. This game was scheduled to take place on the main square. So to the players down there on the camera mic. Are they behaving so far? The weather is overcast. We can still just about see the mountain. The mask, mask is masked. And the clouds are moving at a decent pace. Suggests quite changeable weather today. It will be interesting to see if the fourth eleven get a game in today. And of course, the main event is here this morning. safety. Will do. So I will leave you for just a moment. So there's not much to report on at the moment, but we do hope to get play underway shortly. Claire Shillington currently talking to, to the umpires. Let, let me repeat that and make sure I got your garbled message correct. The start has been delayed by 15 minutes in an effort to let the pitch dry out. Thank you. So there's the news from the middle. Does that mean we're aiming for a 9.45 start? Who can say? Who knows? Many congratulations to Niall, who on Wednesday night? Managed Pembroke's 100th string game. PCC, IPTV. Yeah. All the Leinster big wigs are out today. And somebody going out to examine the, the wicket. So with 10 minutes till the sh uh, new schedule starts, I'd invite all of you to go and put the kettle on. Gordy Clark there. Amazing how quickly people forget there's a camera. Bring 
takes the field. And the Pembroke batsmen make their way to the middle. But the umpires, like everybody else, are keen to get this game on. I know you know now, but the second camera has an awful picture on it at the moment. Say again. It's looking more at the benches than it is at the pitch. Oh yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine. So today on the junior pitch we'll have the romantically named Dart End and the equally Mills and Boom named the Car Park End. Umpires checking with the scorers. <laughs> That's true. Umpires still checking with the scorers. And we need a ball. He goes off to check his run up. T-shirt isn't enough. First ball. Left arm over. It's gone wide. Keeper's missed it. Not quite Steve Harmson, but not the start of our William Bowler. Would have wanted. First dart of the game. Goes past. Another shade of green behind the bowler's arm. Another one down the left side. This time the umpire lets that one go. Of course, one difficulty we are going to have is a score. Texted to me or something at some stage. Gordon might be the man. So he's going around the wicket now. Third ball. This one comes in, played out nicely. To square leg where the grass does the fielding. That's the first run off the bat for Pembroke. Wide and not. 
However, we have the race officials in the middle today. This is the things that normally happen. Straight back at the bowler. It's gone past him. They call for a run, but then the ball only just trickling off the mat to side against it. That's the end of the first over. If I had a score, I'd give you a score. Sam is the bowler from this end. Well done, Balbriggan. Names on shirts. Love it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have no scoreboard. Uh, the best thing I can get at the moment would be a score occasionally from yeah. somebody down there. Four for one, they win down. It's four for one after one. Day. It's a shame it was moved to the junior pitch, but obviously the weather. Yeah, look, I mean, everybody come down the other stuff to, to get this production mm -hmm. on, to get oh. the game going, and, and I have to say, you know, we really, we, I'll break the pitch club really appreciate the efforts that have gone down to get the game on. Uh, it would have been far better if we'd had it on the square. Yeah, we don't have We've yeah. had cameras at both ends and all sorts, whereas we're back to our early beginnings here. <laughs> Looking for two. Well run. Used to be the director as well as. That's right, okay. But uh, the two cameras, they're good pitches. That's, that's the one that's just on the mat at the back, unmanned. And then this is Nal who's standing at the end of the covers there. He's the technical genius here. It's great, it's a great, it's a great thing. 17 devices are, right. are in there at the moment. Perfect. My eyesight just carries me down to see who bowled. Who bowled La Hassan? Keep making sure it doesn't go any further. Oh, that's brilliant! I've got my second mic for you, so the two of us um, 
because it was one of the things we wanted was, was somebody from Bad Brigham to commentate because you know the Bad Brigham players. Yeah. Right, I'm loving the numbers and names on the shirt. Contact is doing. Played out on the next side. Feel the thought about having a go. So discretion was the better part of valor. Let's keep it down to a single. That's two overs gone then. And we're still trying to I get an up to date score for you. I, I get angry just to text me to start off that. Um, just before you go, you wouldn't give that to Nile, would you? I've got a cameraman. He's got a bit of shit here. Hi, I'm going to pitch the front. He's got his camera here. Brilliant, thank you very much. So, two overs gone, big debate going on. <laughs> and forwards through the hold. Played out on the offside, just played defensively, but he takes the single anyway. Fielder gets it back in. Well this is this is most novel. Another first for Nile and PCC IPTV. Two. First game I think we've done from the junior pitch, certainly in my uh, limited knowledge. And a fitting game to do first. Nicely played. Field up, goes to the bowler's end. But well backed up. Well backed up. Two players backing up, as they should. Another single to Pembroke. This is the third over now. Big appeal, certainly from mid off, nothing from the bowler. And a leg by a given. Going down the leg side. Jesse Macris. Jesse Macris. Excellent. To land on the nearest is a Mitchell play, Albert. Albert Harper. Albert. It's been so long since I've played against Bell Brigham. Um, he's not going up there. He's not yeah. holding there. Yeah, because uh, I've heard nothing but great things about Bell Brigham recently. Um, with the work done up at the club and, and the such like. Yeah, I've left trying to put people there now. Well, that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah. It's the future that matters. These are the games that matter because these are the cricketers <coughs> that will do it in the future. Mm -hmm. um, now, there we go. That mic is now live. There we go. Thanks, Craig. Joining you now is Albert Harper from Balbrick and Cricket Club. And Bad Britain Cricket Club would just like to extend, extend his thanks to Railway for the great Pembroke. efforts in, or Pembroke I should say, uh, for, the great, for the great efforts in, in hosting the match this morning and live streaming it. It's great, this is going out to people all over the world now at this stage because we've lots of link ups from ex Bad Britain players that are in, in different parts of the world. And that's one of the great things about the streaming is it does keep you in touch with your old members and People can see what's going on and see that the future is bright for both Balbriggan and, and Pembroke. So that's three overs gone. I think the score is just about to come into us now. 11 off three overs. Uh, no, no wickets down at this point. Uh, so good tight, good tight start. Even start, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beginning the fourth over, Hassan Shahid just venturing down the leg side. I think the, the, the players today will, will enjoy the fact that they're not playing one day leg side wides. Yeah, I mean, I commentated a fair bit of women's cricket, and, and when you see women's firsts, um, they, they do do the leg side wides, but then you've got players who are playing two, three, four, and uh, I think it's a bit more sensible on the regulations there. Perfect, yes. 
These are good lads, these bowlers. I presume they're playing for your adult teams. Yeah, well. we, it, we've been lucky, Craig. In, in recent weeks, we started up a development team and the branch accepted them in at late notice into the 70 and B. Oh, yeah. And we've been able to get some of the kids. Lots of cricket over there. They, they played three matches and... One of my, actually, my grandson Ryan Keenan played in the first game. And got, he's only 11 years of age and got 50 not out. Excellent. And last week we had two, two 14 year olds that got to 29 and 25, it's the, the highest scores they've ever got. And uh, it, built, it built that confidence fantastically well. Amazing, isn't yeah, it? yeah. Pass on in again toward, toward delivery. White ball this time. So, yep, it is overcast, but the clouds are all high enough that hopefully we'll get this game in. And hopefully the force will get their game in later. And it's lovely and warm out there on, on, on the ground. So. When you're in the sun, anyway. <laughs> Great side on view there. Good throw in to the stumps. Think about having all the equipment these days, especially helmets, is without the numbers on the back, it makes makes it almost impossible to identify players. Yeah, and like Balbriggan decided this year that we play in the club colours at underage level, and and I think it's it's been a, it, it's been a nice addition to the to the. All the underage teams this year. Full ball from Hassan there, just played down the leg side by Ethan. They're looking good at taking their singles here. These two are running well together. Yeah, Ethan, they... Ethan currently part of the Irish under 13 setup. He is, yeah. He's he's worked very hard yeah. on his game this year, mind you. Come, the, comes from age comes age. comes from good cricket stock with Father Gordon, and well, yeah, we'll, we'll give it good anyway. <laughs> Um, but yes, it's, it's uh, excellent the way uh, these players have, have blossomed really under COVID. Uh, so, 15 or 4 overs, just going at just under 4 and over. Our cameraman is now running back to see how badly I've been performing so far. Uh, I'm trying to run the replay machine as well. But uh, as sure, we'll see what happens. Jesse Macris continuing from the railway end. An appeal from somewhere on the pitch. It's the only way I get any atmosphere. <laughs> oh, did you turn it up? I'm just check on everything else to make sure Jesse Mack was bowling left arm round the wicket now. Jesse is a pupil in Balbriggan. Educate together secondary school, 14 year old. And he's got and a he whip. That's a superb delivery. That's gone. exactly what he was looking for. Ethan Clark is gone. The Brigham players are all in the centre celebrating. That's what they should. That was a beautiful delivery. Yeah, beautiful. Holding around the wicket. Just, uh, Ethan just played down the wrong line and lost his off stump. That was superb. And in fact, because Niles in the vicinity, there's a good chance he's, he's going to show the replay. Yeah. That's a lovely delivery. And clinical as well. Just took out the off stump. I have to say, lads, the, the setup here is fantastic. It's, uh, and it's great, like, often I'm, I'm at home in Balbriggan, maybe nothing going on on, on our ground, and I can get into one of the live stream matches. And that famous match from two seasons ago where Pembroke won the division against division Marion. Three, yes. Oh, that was, that was Marion's. Uh, Marion seemed to have cut back, shall we say, on their streaming. Yeah. Um, I think they're finding. Here we go. Look at this foot delivery. That's yeah. front foot didn't go anywhere. Back foot came across. Speared as it more than anything else. But a beautiful delivery. That's the first wicket down. So as far as we know, it's 15, 15 for one. Oh, good to oh, uh, bit of confidence now. 
Yeah, the ball, the, the ball breaking players. There's a there's a there's a good variety in the in the bowling setup. It's all, I think it's always good to have that left arm seamer in your attack. Oh, it gives gives, really gives you great options. And Jesse is Jesse Jesse has been with us now, pro pro probably on his seventh season now, and he's always been very committed. And is now playing tour team cricket on a reasonably regular basis at Division Eleven, which is great for a fourteen-year-old to be playing cricket. Absolutely. That high. We'll only bring him on more and more. Well pitched up. Well fielded. Number 10. The writing slightly too small even for my new glasses. The sun is shining a bit more now. There's a bit of wind, so the ground is certainly going to be drying out. And it may end up being to Val Brigham's advantage batting second. Take any any advantage that's gone, Craig. At this, <laughs> cricket cricket is one of these little advantages that you might attain during during a game. Well, more so now I'm watching cricket rather than playing. You do notice how many little turning points there are in a game. Yeah. Um, whether it be taking a wicket like that, or fabulous catch that just lifts the team, or or a batsman finally breaking shackles and getting four away somewhere. Without a doubt. And I, I think what's noticeable when you get to this junior level, the improvement in the field and from the minor level is, is huge. They don't let many balls by them. They, they take their catches when they go in the air. It's, it's almost a function of age. Must he play the way? Uh, his bodies are growing so much at various stages and then suddenly their brain catches up with their body and they realise yeah. what they can do. Yeah, it's like it just clicks into place for them. And yep. some it clicks into place a little bit earlier. But uh, I just noticed our lads over the last few weeks now, and in, in saying that it'll probably be Sod's law and you'll see somebody drop a, an easy chance or something. But but in general, the boys are, are, have improved, seriously. There's so no at, the, at the end of the fifth over, Pembroke are on 18 for one. Still just under that 4 and over. 4 and over. I think 4 and over could be a, a reasonable target today because the ball is not running too too well in the outfield. The grass is, is not particularly uh, conducive to, to cover drives here today. Hassan continuing. Slice appeal. And I have to say it's great for the boys here today as well to have official umpires appointed to the match. Takes, takes the pressure off everybody. Yeah. It takes the pressure off the parents, yeah. it takes the pressure off the coaches who yeah. spent the summer doing that anyway. Morning, Sean. Cool. What are you looking for? There's wind up this. <laughs> Tell him they should be more careful about what he eats for dinner. Nice That's clip. nicely nice clip played down. away. But nicely fielded. Hassan there. Not just a bowl up. Yes, we've yet to see a boundary this morning, a combination of the grass and the bowling. Very open stance. Just back to the bowler. Short, outside off. Not put away. No. It, was, it was one that on a different day, I'm sure the batsman may have dispatched to the boundary, but Hassan got away with a loose one there. It's the sort of ball that if you're getting your first couple as a batsman, it can get you out from that old adage of bad ball tip wickets. Which we've all experienced so much over the years, Craig. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? That's the beauty of the game, I think, that... Every bowler is in it, no matter how 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 good or how poor their their deliveries may be. Yep. They're always in with a chance of taking a wicket because of a false throw from the batsman. We we call it the Irwin Sobers theory. We reckon it's just this point. Short again, played out. Well played. Just on the leg side, the fielder comes in, just keep it to the single. 
Uh, yeah, we reckon that one of our recently departed Cyril Irwin, um, Michael Sharp always said that if you put Cyril Irwin on a, on a desert island with cigar field sobers, Cyril will get him out eventually. Perfect. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> Cyril, very nice man. I've played, I've played against Cyril a lot over the years, obviously coming through with Paul Brigham and Cyril was always a, a gentleman that you liked meeting up when you visited Pembroke or when he was down playing in Paul Brigham. Yeah, he certainly was a gentleman, that was for sure. After six overs, Pembroke are on 21 for one. So the, the rate is just slowing up at shade, but still close enough to fall and over at this stage. Three and a half, but wickets in hand, only one wicket down so far, so reasons for optimism for both teams at this stage. Balbriggan will be delighted at keeping the wrong way down. This is Addy Wankett now coming on. Addy is in the Irish under 13 setup. Addy is only playing cricket basically 18 months at this stage, and his rate of improvement in the last 12 months has been enormous. Quite a pacey bowler. Uh, for his age, he's still a minor. That's the thing that gets me is that. Lovely clip off, off the legs there for a single. When uh, Cricket Leinster have changed the old names now with the Cubs and the Miners. Oh, yes. If you're not in. If you're not a parent or a coach or whatever. It's just very confusing to know who's playing at any particular time. Nicely played nice out on the offside. Play. Again, nice fielding. Still boundary free. Just getting a good look out on the beautiful scene out there on the Pembroke ground. Pembroke second ground. It's, it's a great facility for a club to have a second ground so close to its first ground. I can actually remember playing on the first ground here against Pembroke seconds a number of years back and civil service played Pembroke's, one of Pembroke's lower sides on the bottom ground and one of the Pembroke batsmen got, if my memory is right, he got 211 and he, he, and he, ended, up, exactly right. and he ended up on the losing side. Yes, yes, uh, I was playing against you on the, on the main pitch, on the main pitch here. that day and uh, the gentleman's name was Alan Ramsey, he scored 211 not out in about 30 overs. That was the way Alan played, it was, it was all done with no dinner. I can remember speaking with some of the older heads with civil service that day, and they, Leslie Hewson being one of them, and they said, sure, what can we do when we go in and try and chase the score? And the chase for 100, no matter the size of the pitch, was some chase. And uh, I think both sets of players that day just loved the, the fact that the, the game of cricket was played in the spirit that it was. And we, yeah. we enjoyed, when we got the opportunity, we enjoyed looking out at the fours and sixes that were well, played. We, on our pitch, when we were playing on the main square that day, there was sort of applause. Well, what's that for? Well, that's for Alan. Well done, Alan. Got a 50. What, what's, and about three overs later, what's that applause for? Oh, he's, he's got a 100. And, and it just kept going and going. Second highest score that I know of in Pembroke. I'm sure there's, there's other scores that have been as high. Uh, the other the other high scores, Robin Kelly out in Rush a few years ago, 217. Fantastic from Robin. Uh, after seven overs, Pembroke are on 25 for one. So still roughly going at the, two, the three and a half an over. Bannister's a goal now. Fionn Bannister, well breaking captain. Played away nicely on the offside. Take a single there. Fionn is a 14 year old. Uh, currently a bit educated in Remower Educate together, but he's a, he's a great guy to have as captain. He's the most level headed kid you'll ever want to you'll ever meet. And uh, I couldn't say anything but good things about him. We're not on air anyway. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a joy to work with. So manly. The one thing I will say about playing double headers on the on the ground with the two two games going on at the same time is, is this width, this boundary in front of us. It's quite short on both sides. Right. It's, it's the one game. Yeah. 
And there it is. First, just gets there. First boundary of the day. And we can hear we can, we can hear the cheers there from the Pembroke contingent in the background. Lovely, lovely pull for four. Fionn will be looking to come back with a good delivery after going to the boundary on that, that one. Which is always the fear, but that's when overplaying the shots. Goes again to flip that around the leg, leg side. side. Brian Dunphy picking it up and throwing it in. I think certainly the introduction of numbers is something that uh, Pembroke are going to have to look out for the year. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's been a, a good concept in our club, and it's, as I say, you can pick it out there so easily if you want to bounce them for 45. Big shot. shot. Just trickles out square leg where it's fielded. Picked up by Tom Harford. Just another single. Quite a decent over this one for Pembroke. I make that eight off the over. One ball to go. over will be from the railway end. Addy to continue. Good crowd down there. Lovely shot. Shoot wide. Way it out. Tom Shepard picks up and Throws back into the bowler's end. <coughs> Sun may be shining outside, but a bit of a breeze in the hall. Good delivery pushed out on the leg side. Got our easy single there for Pembroke. As you see in the background there, Jim Bennett. Great see Jim and, and the Cricket Leinster photographer here as well. Without a doubt. And standing with Jim at present are Tom and Olive Harford. Parents of one of the Balbrecon players. Nice to see them out at the cricket. They're great supporters of the club. <coughs> nice bit of fielding there. No quick single this time. Killy, Killy and Miller swooping in there. You can even see from the sunlight on the pitch how clouds are breaking up. Bit of sunshine coming through. Well bowled again for Maddie. There's a great vibrancy in the Pembroke Club, Craig, over the last five, six seasons in particular. It's, it's, it's massive what you're doing. Like you've, you've brought through so many special young players. We are very proud of our Irish internationals. Without a doubt, and like to, to have to go out most weeks, either Without through Leinster Lightning or <laughs> Irish call-ups, it's, it's a, it's a marvellous achievement from the club to be able to compete at the level of competing. Nice shot at square of the wicket. Picked up by Tom Shepard. Will only be a single. But yes, uh, the, the building blocks we put in place a few years ago, and that's, I mean, that's the nice thing about uh, um, Irish contingent. Is that they, they are kids who have come up through the club. Brilliant. It is, it's, it's fantastic. And I have to say, Paul and Theo Lawson, great guys. They just get on with it every week. Yep. Knowing that they're probably going to be without their top players. And the, the results that they're producing over the last five, six seasons have been fantastic. It, Full it, culminating it, in an All Ireland win. Yeah, it definitely is the. I am getting the score from the Belgrigan supporters. 
and after after nine overs, it's 38 for one. So quite a good comeback there from Addy. Yeah, there's no doubt. This is as far as the the top team in the club. This is a golden era. Without a doubt, it's, it. it's I mean, fantastic cricketers. And the thing is that people don't appreciate and won't appreciate until it's gone. Yeah. When these when these players have retired or finished, you know, what's, well, this is this is the future we're watching the whole key, now. The whole key is what what's coming through, and and, and I've no doubt, having played you in the minor final last year, that Pembroke are well armed for the future. Big swing. Nothing on that one. Well stopped by wicketkeeper Izzy McLean. Izzy has been with Bob Riggan now five seasons. She's a great, great young girl. And she actually plays ladies division one cricket with the Hills. She went up a couple of weeks ago for a, a net and they asked her would she play ladies one. Excellent. This is the second wicket. Second wicket. Bannister. Bowling. Well, he may have gone for eight in his last wicket, but he'll be happy enough now. He's picked up his first wicket. My goodness, these batsmen do change over quickly, don't they? They don't give him any chance to summarise or show replays. That's, that's it, Craig. But we'll collect the replays up, and at the end of the ten innings, we will um, show you those highlights. Assuming that my director comes back from his spot in the field. Yes, the future is bright, and, and in Pembroke again, uh, at this age group and, and uh, throughout the club, you know, the kids coming through and forcing their way into the adults teams now. Through yeah, well, the numbers, the numbers registered to Pembroke's under age set up this year, it, 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 massive numbers, and, and uh, within those numbers, that there would. Yeah, the, most likely there is almost to the element of the more numbers you have, the more chance you have of finding something That's special. It, yeah. Um, no, the work done by Bill and his team in Sunday morning down here, it's, it's a coffee shop uh, for the parents, but for the coaches, look, single just pushed out to the leg side, no problem there. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually a delight, to, I, don't, I don't have any children uh, down here, but I'm often down here on a Sunday morning just for a coffee and a bit of sunshine and see other people running around the field for a change. Yeah. And I think Sunday mornings have been used more and more by clubs. Yeah. Uh, I know that Brigham this, this season have set up for Sunday morning uh, Super Blues, we call it. Right. Kid to be kids up to eight years of age, but we've kids basically from four years of age up, break them up into their various groups, and, and it's working out really well. And Little patches all over yeah. the ground. And, games and, and the commitment of Adrian Harper and, and others has been fantastic. Lavinia McLean. Do you know without the work of that's a very good ball, good lengths just dropping in. But the, it's without the work of the coaches and the parents, um, then none of this would happen. I mean, away games, especially in these COVID times, means that pretty much everybody has to come separately. Well, they're, and, they're, and uh, you know, it, it is a great commitment, and it's a great commitment from Cricket Leinster to to run the competitions and. All the fixtures were centrally done this year, and, and in general, they worked out very well. So after 10 overs, Balbriggan uh, possibly will be the happier with the first 10 in that Pembroke, or 39 for 2 of 10. Well, it certainly so needs to go some in this second 10 to set a target for Balbriggan. But you're quite right, Balbriggan will be the happier of the two teams at this stage. Addy to continue. On the railway end, just a, another well, well pitched up delivery. I think it's great to see, Craig, the skill levels that the kids have, and, and it's all down to the coaching setups that the clubs are following. Yes. And, and, and you see, when you say the skill levels, you see the kids down on the nets, even without a coach all day, every day, and you see them playing these ramp shots and scoop shots and reverse but, sweeps, and, yeah. and that's that's the skill levels that certain people my age... They were, they were all shots that were alien to us. Absolutely. And a lot of it's down to wearing a helmet. 
Yeah, so I remember Niall O'Brien was 15, maybe 16, batting in Balbriggan on our old type ground. Uh, he was batting with his father, and Niall actually switch hit me for four, and I looked down at him and I thought this was ultra just, cheeky. But just being smart, you know, yeah, but, as you say, cheeky as much as anything else. But, uh, you know, it's now a good shot. He would hit a bowler like me like that, but he did, and I soon realised that the game was changing. And now we're looking at it, these, these shots as Craig says, they're just ten a penny now. We're looking at them all the time on the television. Well, the shots you can only play now, but anybody yeah. who plays a random shot with that hand is just asking them to do it to Yeah. And that's why we never grew up with that, because, I mean, I still can't wear a helmet now. It's kind of too heavy, claustrophobic, whereas these kids... It's natural to them now. They, they know no other way. If you told them to bat without a helmet, yeah. it would feel Lovely unnatural shot to them. The leg side there. There's another shot for a single, though. Breaking players uh, in today's team, Brian Dunphy. Brian had an incredible innings the other day, batting for the Irish under 30 in a Ninter squad match up in Oak Hill. They were chasing 129 to win, and Brian, Brian finished with 101 not out. <laughs> Brilliant. He's, uh, he's only a 12 year old, he's an incredibly strong player, but when we came to the final here in Pembroke last year, in the minors, Brian was bowled fourth ball, and that's the beauty of the game. Again, reputation no guarantee, no. Well, past performance is no guarantee as to future performance. After 11 overs, Pembroke are 41 for 2. Well, and close to that 4 and over again. Bannister is to continue. Hey ladies, hey, the far corner. Two of my granddaughters just coming into the clubhouse there. You can come in. That's my wife, Yvonne. Hello, Yvonne. Hi, hey, Yvonne. This is Craig. Played nicely away on the offside. Niles left that camera on quite wide as he makes use of the facilities. As you can see from the trees in the background, it's a bit of a breeze out there at the moment. So it would be that causing the drop in temperature. Nice ball from Bannister there. Just push through to the wicket keeper. Yeah, I did try to fix it so it wouldn't be out of that's, that's, ooh. Big shout for an LBW there, but probably just going down leg side. That seems to be the indication from the umpire. There's a couple of bobs to go. Three to go. Three is, to go. is that what that one is? Oh, I, was brought, I was brought up in the old days just signalling the last ball. and I still find it hard to get away from that when I'm out umpire. I, I'm far more of the signal when there's two left to go. Gives you an option. Yeah. To recover if needs be. Lovely single pushed out on the offside there. Very well. Go on. It's very well. Right. Oh, I know. I left it that way because I was coming up. I know. I was most happy to see if that picture great, got me. Great picture there. Yeah. Oh, there's a big hit there. Fielder picks it up inside the boundary. Well yeah. fielded. Well Saves fielded. three runs there. Looks like Tom Shepard down on the boundary there. Well fielded, Tom. I think the Pembroke batsmen are now showing their intent to push this score along. I think they realise, looking at the scoreboard, that they need to push it on a bit. Same fielder. I won't claim he saved three runs that time. Oh. That's the that's end of that over, is it? That's the end of the 12th over. So e each of the four bowlers used so far have bowled three overs. I'd say we might might see some spin now from Brian Dunphy or Ryan Keenan. Look around, look around. One down in the corner. Right, right down in the far corner. People come in like it's an RGE studio here. Normally we're outside under the gazebo because we're only covering pictures on the main square. 
that Nana's got the setup now that you can have a camera at both ends. The camera, this camera here, the one you're seeing at the moment, is actually wireless. So 45 for two off 12. Again, just slightly behind that four and over. And we're gonna continue with our forward bowler, Paddy. He's going to finish his four overs in this in this well. Hit, hit on the run. Taking the single before he hit the wall. It's a shame that this was taken off the main square. Flashed away. Beats the first well fielder. Field, well fielded by Macris. Yeah, if the if the game was played on the main pitch here, some of the balls that have been hit would surely be running to the boundary. But with the, the grass slightly damp and a little bit higher than the main pitch, it's more difficult to and score. considers giving that away. Chain decides not to. Three to go. Um, I think I think the batsman's height there probably done him with the wide and that he reached the, he there. reached this and, and, and just didn't hit it. Tries to flash that one down square leg, instead it just runs down fine leg. Leg by, signal by the umpire. So Craig, do you do much of the commentary here in Pembroke? People would say far too much. Far too much. Look, Niall puts a, a lot of, has put a lot of work into, um, that's a nice ball, uh, into putting up this production and everything. And I just find that it doesn't matter what the commentary is or what they're talking about, but if there's volume as well as pictures, people tune in for more, more people tune in. And so I, I just feel that Niall deserves to get every chance. Without a doubt. It's a fantastic production. And, then, and to get the different angles as well, it's, it, it's great. We have live live streamed a little bit in Balbriggan, not so much this year. I think we may have only done the one game with the one camera set up on the back of the side screen. But it is brilliant to be able to to watch the games and see the, the playbacks. That's it, and as much as anything else, as a training tool or or just a confidence tool. Yeah. Whereby you can go back and see a good innings or good good overs. And that. The, Hi, yeah. Hello. The the the. The hope in Balbriggan is that we will have different camera angles over the years. What are you saying? I think we're waiting on an update. What you were saying, wasn't it? I wasn't saying anything to you. <laughs> Communications with our cameramen today by Walkie Talkie. Another single taken. Bannister continues with. You see, when you look at that picture, it looks like the ball would flow, flow. across that grass. Yeah, yeah. But again, the rugby season is nearly upon us. Oh, yeah. Batsman missed out there on a wire that he went to Paul and missed, but they've, they've got the extra run. They don't need all these runs at the moment. They do want to be getting over, what were you saying, four and over? Yes, we didn't get an update after the 13th over there. I have to ask my contact in Balbriggan why we're not getting an update. It's just where the pitch is sighted, we can't have use of the scoreboard for it. Well, uh, another project for my Euro Millions win. I think it keeps Jim young and healthy. That's yes. Four for Pembroke. It is only the Look. second though, isn't it? It's only the second four at the inning so far. Bannister straying down the leg side. <laughs> You've just been offered a coffee, haven't you? <laughs> Albert, would you like a cup of coffee? I, I'm grand, Craig. Thanks a million. Yeah, I'm perfect. So 
for the banisters to continue. Fielder comes around to pick that up. Again, the ball not really travelling on what is, let's say, damp ground. It's not wet. It's, it's still great. With the weather forecast that we had, it's great to have the clear overhead skies and to be getting the game in because the kids were all so much looking forward to it. In the background there, I can see great, great cricketer playing with Albrigan now. Sh Shaggy well, in the air. No, it's not. It's bouncing on the ground, shows how much I know. I can't believe the batsman's asking for a drink. 14th over, just completed. Hey. No problem. Hey, yeah. I think we, we will see a change of bowling here because both bowlers have completed the four overs. It's five. Five bowlers, four overs each. Five bowlers, four overs each, Craig, yes. Okay. Looks like Brian Dunphy is coming on to bowl some spin bowling. Hello. Amanda, Albert. Hey, Amanda. Amanda. Hi. Albert, Albert. <laughs> Brian Dunphy, currently part of the Irish under 13 setup. He's actually been brought into the Irish under 15 side for a, a game. I think it's next weekend up north. Brian is a big hitter, good leg spin bowler as well, and he gets it right. Very tall chap for his age. I was going to say, he's, he's very tall, isn't he? Very tall for he's, This is up to second year in, in, in secondary school, but Brian is only sixth class. Yeah. And director. My first time ever. At the end of the 14th over, the score had moved on to 59 for two. So Pembroke, with wickets in hand, will be looking to push this on now. Perhaps pushing the singles a bit quicker. Perhaps pushing more of them. But they are going for the big blow as well. That one's got through. Certainly got some turn on that as well, which obviously didn't help with regards to the wide. But he's, he's pushing that down and, and with plenty of revs. It's in the air, and that one isn't going to make the boundary either. Pulled up by Macris, short of the boundary. That could be the first two of the day. Sorry, yeah. Albert, yes, do you want a stall? No, no, no. Perfect. He's followed his group so much he's not used to getting a seat. He's always standing in a field somewhere. Standing on point. Oh, that's a nice shot. It's a beautiful shot for four. And that's it, Pembroke. Pembroke are pushing on here in this over. And this is the advantage, of course, wickets in hand. You can see how much turn he's getting. I mean, it's think, pitching and. I think possibly the, the damp ball is not helping the, the bowler. It's certainly not a leggy, you know. They, they it's rely it's so much on their grip. And our grip. That's a lovely delivery. Good bounce, and that's out. That's a super beautiful, beautiful catch behind by Izzy McLean there. Brian came back from a, a wide ball and bowled a beautiful ball that left the batsman. He got bounce and turn. And it was played through to the wicketkeeper. She took a lovely catch. Third wicket falls. But Pembroke are now looking to push on for runs, so chances are going to come. It's a 
amazing how everyone segregates all the fielders together, all the bats oh, together, the and all the umpires <laughs> together. You can still just about see the hills in the background, just clouds still high enough. There's bits of blue up there. If you fancy an early morning, well, it's not that early anymore, is it? 10 30, yeah, so nearly an hour into the game. Well, apart from the late delay. Fancy coming down if you're in the area. 71 for 3 or 50 in Pembroke. So they, 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 they have pushed it along now that they're getting close to 5 and get, over. Getting close to 5 and over, and we've a change of bowling from Car Park End. Car Park End. Well, let's say Park, Park Avenue End. Park Avenue End. It sounds posher. Perfect. And uh, the bowling change is Ryan Keenan. My goodness, it's... Ryan's another leggy, the ball hits the... Oh, well for well, well, eventually. Ryan is an 11 year old. Ryan is my grandson. And he's a late developer at cricket. He, he really only started to play the game when he was seven. And uh, he's, he's done really well. He opens the baton for the Leinster and our 11 squad who are up in playing up in Belfast next week. Absolutely brilliant to hear the pride of a grandfather. So, Ryan, also a leg spinner, just a bit shorter. A bit shorter, well. yeah. But yeah, growth comes in its own time, and we all grow up to be the right height. Yeah, he's 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 Ryan is only eleven. He's just finished fifth fifth class in primary school. And here he is in a cup final. That one's gone up in the air. That's gone for six. It's gone a long way in the air. Well, that's the first six. Great hit there. He was onto sure, it very quickly. I'm sure the batsman's eyes lit up when he seen that one coming down. Nice, juicy, Ryan, just, slow, full toss. Just a bit too full in his length. Another shot. Another six. That's all right, Ryan. Just... You're the, you're the one with the ball. I think you might see a little ripper coming through now. I might just try and push this one through yeah. a bit. Good That's comeback. An excellent comeback. Always like to see a bowler who can be hit for a six or two and then just bowls a good ball anyway. Doesn't get flustered. Again, nice good ball it. to finish the over. Got over for Pembroke though in the context of the match. No overthrows. Over called. So yes, a good over for Pembroke that. A couple of sixes. We now have as many sixes as we do fours. Still waiting on the score to come through. After 16 overs. I think there might have been 15 off that over. Do one last time? 86 I would estimate the score is. Now we must one, attend one, a few one. few games now holding a scorebook at square yeah. leg for these youth. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> Umpiring and scoring at the same time, Craig. I got the last one, yeah. Thanks. Good ball, ball. right up on the batsman's feet. He manages to just get it down the leg side. Another single. Spin has been our trump card in the, some of the other rounds of this competition. Uh, today it's just not quite working for us, but there's still time for the bowlers to pull it back. Oh, great effort. Nearly made it. Jesse Mackers there with a despairing dive. But as Craig says, a great effort to try and pull it up inside the rope. It's, it's the willingness uh, to throw their bodies to the floor. There comes an age. 
where suddenly you're falling to the floor and sort of throwing yourself Tra- to the floor. Yes. And that's when the ball starts going underneath you and, oh. In my day, Craig, it was a big boot that you stuck out and if it didn't, yeah. st- if it didn't hit your boot, you... Nobody shouted at you yeah. if you didn't dive. That Not has been placed shot. perfectly. The placement as much as anything there, helping that one get to the boundary. So after a very steady start by Pembroke, they're now starting to go after the two spinners. Another one played out beautifully on the offside. Just a single, well picked up by Addy. Bowler looks a little bit frustrated with something. It's a good ball. Lovely ball from Brian. That's going to do nothing other than no, congratulate himself for keeping that one out. That was a super delivery. Come forward to it. It's in the air on the offside. Well picked up by Macros. And a Limit, good arm. Limits it to two. That's the end of the 17th over. Three overs to go with Pembroke setting a target. Another dark races pass on its way into town and out the north side. I think we're seeing the change of bowling from the Park Avenue end. Back to the opening bowler. No, it looks like Tom Harford oh, is coming, right. Tom Harford's coming on for an over. Score after 17, 98 for three. To think that Pembroke were, I think, 39 off 10 hours. That's Tona, great. What do we say about 97? Played out on the offside. And that's another four for Pembroke. That we're going to on to their seventh bowler. Tom Harford is the bowler from this end. Tom is a 14 year old who's currently been schooled in our Gillen Community College. Tom's game has gone to a good level this year. He's getting some adult cricket. And he's in the air. Fielder there. And fielded by Addy. Just the single. Played away on the leg side. Glancing blow. Set a total of somewhere in around the 125 to 130. A couple of overs to go after this. Sure, it's the old anything over a runner ball used to be in our day. Nice shot nice to shot. the leg side. It's only going to be a single. Yeah. I can remember when economy rates were sort of like three and over. If you went for more than that, the captain started thinking about whipping you off. Now it's if you're less than a run of ball. And Craig, back in 1975 when we started the Christie Russell Cup out in Balbriggan, Christie had died the previous year playing with Balbriggan against Man of War. He was out there hitting a lovely single out to the cover boundary and Tom Morphy was the bowler. And as he turned to be the non-striker, he just collapsed on the ground. And unfortunately, those days, there was no mobile phones or anything to get no. emergency help. And uh, by the time he was got to the doctor in Balbriggan, unfortunately, Christy, who was one of the legends of the game over many years playing for Balrutri and latterly with Balbriggan, Christy passed away. But we started a 20 over competition in Christy's honour. And if you got four and over, you were you were quite happy finishing, if you finish with 80 after 20 overs, and I was even on some of the smaller grounds, like Balrothry's ground at the time, and uh, 
now it's a 180 plus the oh, people are looking for it. The IPL has a lot to answer for. Without a doubt. So after 18 overs, Pembroke are 106 for 3. And we're now back to the opening bowler, Jesse Macris. The bowl the 19th over. He bowled very well his opening spell on that, that first wicket he took. This one's gone up in the air. It's a chance and it's taken. Well, well taken by Brian Dunphy in the outfield. Even at long off, Brian got under it well and took the catch. So, Ooh. good comeback there for Jesse. First ball of his second spell. Well, with, uh, into the last, into the penultimate over, you expect uh, the bats to be a swing now. Without a doubt. That's four wickets down. We may even see one or two of those ramp shots we spoke about, Greg. I think nowadays the, the young players are willing to try anything to put a few runs on the board. Yeah. That had me said, we had the Irish going recently. Josh Little, one of ours. Um, Tremendous shot play a ramp shot to the last ball with four was needed. Now if it had come off it would have been brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's when it doesn't come off that you, you feel that look, it was a stupid attempt, but, yeah. you know, I, I admire somebody like Josh that has the has temerity the to, to, to try these things. Yeah. Anyway. Great young cricketer, Josh. I love his attitude. He gives, he gives the batsman plenty at the other end, even, even at the international level. He's not afraid of... Repetition means nothing to him. To Josh now. And I think from the sideline we all love to see a little bit of that. The heart. Yeah, without a doubt. That's the place. Not trying to overhit it. This has been a fine batting display by the Pembroke team in the, in the circumstances with the ground and the, the dampness on the pitch yeah, all throughout their innings. They've adapted quite quickly to the conditions. A few, yeah. few lusty blows there, push the score along. Well bowled by Macris up in good areas. It's a good length ball. Make just the batsman change his shot. Just a single. Batsman was looking to play big, long perhaps, uh, extra cover area, and then realised that that wasn't the ball to do it to. You can see Jesse's parents standing in the background. I'm sure they're very proud of his achievement so far in his cricket life. Lovely shot. Nicely swivelled round on that one. That one should make the boundary. Fielded by, by the grass. <laughs> yes, without a doubt, the grass was the on the Balbriggan side there. But a beautiful pull behind. Got two for it. And now we head into the final over of the Pembroke innings. Side. That's not going to run for four either. I suspect the fielder will get there. Yeah, the grass was the winner there. But again, the importance of running that first one quickly.
take the slope out of this at the end of the over. The slower ball attempt is. Batsman was onto it very quickly. Hit for six. Didn't move his feet, but big swing of the bat. Six welcome runs. Just last picture there for who's, a second. Who's operating that? We're back on now. Limited just to the one camera for the moment, for the last few balls of this innings. Lovely shot down the long half there, but only for, only for a single. No, they need to clear the plastic bag off the front of the lens. Okay. Now we're back, there's Jim Bennett just walking through. Lap number 78. Oh, that's nicely taken single. Nice bit of fielding. Well run single there. To give the the batsman. One with the big bat and long arms as Craig says. The opportunity to take the last couple of balls for boundaries. He's gone for the big one. Pitcher returns. Didn't, didn't get anything on it, I don't think. No. Maybe come off the wicket keeper, but he's, he's, he's still on strike for the last ball. He's in danger of uh, throwing his back out. Yes. He's throwing such a big bat at that one. Another big swing, attempted run, suicide. I think there was a run out off the last ball there. Well picked up by the wicket keeper Izzy McLean and well thrown. She's done well with the behind the she, sticks she, there. She has indeed. And I think at the end of the 20 over, both teams will be relatively happy because I think 120 plus runs is a decent total given the outfield. Very much so. But, um, and uh, I think you could possibly add another 30, 40 onto that. So. At the conclusion of the 20 overs, the score is Pembroke 121 after 20 overs. So Balbriggan will need 122 and we'll return to you in about 10 minutes. And before then we'll leave you with the pictures of the ground and we'll see if we can't organise a highlights package for you now. We'll return in about 10 minutes. Th thank you to Albert for his work in the first innings and we'll see you back for the second innings. Back for the second innings great, Excellent, yes. thank you very much. I'll have the, I'll have the I'll break and button line up for you. Excellent. Thank you, thank you.
So, Balbriggan will be chasing 122 in the second innings. 122, we'll see them capturing the cup. Anything less than that. And it will mean Pembroke will take the silverware home. They've put 121 on the board. This match being played on the junior match due to the weather, overnight weather, making the square unavailable. So we now have a couple of batsmen, a couple of umpires, and a clump of fielders. Bruce Wayne into skeleton. One of his layers, towel in the back there to keep the ball dry. And we're just about to get play underway. As I say, the target is 122 in 20 overs. As well as opening the bowling, Hassan will be opening the batting. And Albert comes back to join us now. So we're just about to get underway here. Brian Dunphy is going to face the first ball. Hassan Shahid, the number two bat. Start off with a wide ball down the leg side. That breaking chase is underway. Coming a little bit overcast again, I've just been informed it's raining very heavily in Balbriggan. Brian Dunphy hits a nice Square cut, but no run. Credit Leinster are very quick. They've already got photographs of the first innings. That's up in the air, but it lands safely. Run on the board for Balbriggan. Single to Brian Dunphy. That brings it up to two. And 120 requires from 118, 119 balls. Bowler going around the wicket. Well taken by Ethan Clark down the leg side. Ethan, who took a 
another nasty ball to the mouth earlier in the season up it, in Balbriggan. Up in Balbriggan, it, it happened and uh, I have to local, say. Local, lo- luckily we were able to get him to a dentist fairly quickly and well, I certainly think his father and himself were greatly appreciative of the efforts made by Balbriggan and, and, and especially the dentist. Without a doubt. William Beatty drifting down the leg side, that'll be a wide plus the one. So five wides. Five this is wides. not the opening start that William Beatty would have wanted, or nor Pembroke, but Balbrigan would be delighted with that as a start. William must be bowling with decent pace there to to carry the boundary with the with the ball. He's he's played a couple of games for the fives this year. Facilities. Yeah, Ryan is Ryan. That's my grandson. Ryan is number six. Uh, I nah. think they, they all love to get their pads on just to just in case. Just just keep, just keep to show the captain that they're that they are. Right, bowlers warming up in the outfield. The bales came off, not touched by the bowler. Just shows that the wind is picking up. The wind up. is whipping, whipping up. Okay, Craig, having stood out there during the the interval. And the blue patches of sky have I, I, disappeared. I can, I can well see why the, the spinners in particular suffered uh, trying to bowl in the, in the breeze. That's a better ball from Beatty. Dunphy just plays it out. Well, there's plenty of runs off this over. Many thanks to the 27 devices that are on at the moment. People around the world watching. Well played by Hassan from clipped single. away. Man on the boundary. Just behind square. That's the end of the first over. Plenty of runs in that one. Nine, ten. No wicket down. Ethan's sprinted through from keeping at one end to the other end. It was actually funny the day that he got, got that wallop in Balbriggan. Eight, eight for one off one. Uh, Ethan was more concerned with the, the way his lip looked with the swelling on it rather than the, the two that he had lost. I think he must have been uh, thinking maybe of... His date on Saturday night, perhaps. That's, that's what we were smiling at on the, on the day. But he was a brave little kid. There was, there was no tears from him. He, just picked himself up and got on with it. Well, he, he was down on, in the next, the next day. His dad had him down. Self and Gordy spent some time in the nets. Back on the horse straight away. Great stuff, yeah. And Ethan Jungo brother, who I've seen a little bit of over the last couple of years, Eli. I think Eli is going to be a star player as well, representing Pembroke in the, the Leinster squad next week in their matches against the NCU, both in Ring Commons and in Charles Bridge in Stonians. That's a bit wide. Yeah. Craig, have we got the bowler's name from? Oh, is, it, is it Dan Murray, is it? No, it's his brother Luke, Luke still Luke, the twin. Luke. So Luke Murray bowling from the railway end. Dot ball. Hassan looks a very Composed. secure, se- fairly, fairly secure batsman. He had a lovely 44 for the Leinster under 15s the other day up in the match in Northwest. Carried them through to a Good ball. victory. Well kept out. Well bowled. Well played. Nice full pitch ball there. This may only be up to second year, but uh, you can see there's talent there already. Yeah, Hassan, Hassan and Brian, for their ages, they're, they're big boys. Nicely played away on the leg side. The fielder gets down to it, keeps it down to a single. Hassan, son of that great 
former rush cricketer, but has just recently moved to Balbriggan. More, more moving to Balbriggan because he's relocated his house to Balbriggan, and it made sense for him to maybe move every everyone to, to two kids. No man, no man also plays with our seconds. Hassan plays with our thirds. How many men's teams are you running in Balbriggan now? We have five teams, Craig, but. Uh, the beauty for us at the minute is we could possibly run seven teams. There's that many looking for games. Isn't that and brilliant? It's, it's brilliant. I, I, I put a lot of it down to the introduction of Andre Bowata into the club as coach and then the, the kids just coming to an age now where they're looking to play adult cricket. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. So and and I, love the mixture, I, I love the mixture that we have. Like this, we have some great South Africans, uh, pa Pakistan, uh, one or two Indian families. It's it's marvelous what what we're building there in Balbriggan, and there's great camaraderie among all the teams. Well, yeah. It, uh, it's I, the best I, game. I, I, I stand to be corrected, but I think I've heard a statistic, something like that. Balbriggan is the fastest growing young town in Ireland. You know, what what young town is, I don't know because. But Brigham is there for a long, 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 long while, isn't it? Yes. And, uh, but There's a lot of building going on. Yeah. There, and you have young families moving in. Yeah. Suppose. And I think we may have the most nationalities living in Balbriggan of any town in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's great diversity there. And, and it's a beautiful town. Uh, and that's where cricket's brilliant. Yeah. With the diversity. That yeah. It's, it's the best game I've seen for integrating um, immigrants to the country. Oh, it's fantastic, and, 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 and long may it continue, because as I say, they're some of the greatest members that we have. So, off two overs, Balbriggan are 11 for one. Brian Dunphy hits a nice shot there, but it's just straight to the field, at mid on, mid off. A little bit of camera cleaning going on, I see in the background. That's William Beasy now with his second over, a nice shot. That's going to be the first boundary for Val Brigham, and that deserves a boundary on any ground. First, first boundary to Brian Dunphy there, lovely shot for four. Brian, Brian is a very powerful young fella. As mentioned earlier, Brian hit 101 not out the other day, out of a total of 129 for the Irish under 13s in their inter squad match down in Oak Hill. Needed Needed a six off the last ball to get his own personal under it. Only needed two to win the game and duly dispatched it. Just like the tank Craig Knight, my sidekick, uh, Craig is sending through the scores after each over. And it's most welcome. Yep, no scoreboard, unfortunately, for the junior pitch. <coughs> well bowled, well taken by Ethan Clark. Two's coming the over. Yes, unfortunately, no live scoring today. Craig, the host commentator here, has been well looked after here by the Pembroke staff. <laughs> <laughs> The offer was made to me as well, and that's a lovely um, shot. That's gone all the way. So that's the first six. That was part of the reason why I moved my car over to the far side of the car park, as I know this young young man's strength. William will be looking to come back from that one. I'm going to need to take some overs and some wickets. Good ball, well played away on the leg side. The field is out there, but it's, it's not going to stop that. That's ten off two balls. William Beatty's struggling here a bit. I have to say, as a mm. this is Brian, that's Brian the right hander. <laughs> Brian is actually not thirty in for another fortnight. He's only he's twelve at the minute. He's massive. His, fa his dad is a big man as well. But if Brian if Brian gets another crowd sport between now and 16, he's going to be some size of a man. 
Good yeah. yeah. I've often told the story of my introduction. Off three overs, but breaking a 25 for no wickets. Uh, my, uh, my introduction to Gary, his father, and Brian was Gary was out walking our field close to the wickets, which I wasn't too happy with this big dog. And I shouted out from the boundary to get that. I won't say what I put before dog <laughs> off the ground. And uh, Gary came down to me and apologised. And he said to me that he's young fellow was eight years of age. And I said, Will he be interested in playing? He said, Well, he's a really good hurler and rugby player and Gaelic player. And since that day, Brian has fallen in love with cricket. Shot by Hassan, but well picked up in the field. Oh, we're going to be very happy with this start. Always good to get ahead of the right. See our media mogul, Niall Walsh, just making various alterations to that camera. Luke comes in the bowl. It's gone onto the pads, pushed away nicely by Hassan on the leg side. Push around the corner, takes the single. And here's our window clear. Good ball, takes the edge of the bat, flies away. I am now. Was an excellent ball there. But again, single results from it. It's okay there now. Te technical difficulties. Looking to bowl another full length. This time we'll play the way to mid on. Hassan just looks like one of those left handed batsmen that. We've seen so many of over, over the years. He looks like so much time. They just to, look to good, play don't the they? Shot, yeah. But whatever, whatever it is about left-handers in the game, we've had so many brilliant players over the years. Nicely played again. Mid on again. But you can see there's patience in him. Yes. He's not trying to overhit the ball. He's going to turn out to be a fine cricketer. Works very hard on his game, it's, along with his father and his brother Norman, they're, they're regular visitors to the Nets in Balbriggan. And they, they love nothing more than to have the bowling machine out at 70 plus. Mm. And it's great to see Hassan play, playing with the comfort he's playing. So after four overs, Balbriggan are on 27 for no wicket, going along nicely. Just Certainly be very happy with that. This looks like a change of bowling. This is Arshad. Arshad Safi. Arshad I, was one of the Pembroke batsmen that batted very well. I think he struck a couple of lovely, lofty blows for six. He's a fine player. And uh, I know his reputation. I haven't seen him, but I, I've, I've heard plenty about him. His reputation is for turning up to games late. Right, OK. I'll let Craig say that one anyway. Yeah. Oh! It's short there, I think it's been hit for four. Brian Dunphy. That had a bit of everything in it. Brian Dunphy putting away what was a short pitch delivery, shorter than a shad would want. He did throw a hand up for the attempted court and bold. I have to say, I'm glad he didn't get anywhere near it because that, that's the one that would take a finger off. Powerfully hit. So Dunphy to face the leg spinner again. He's gone big this time. And looks, he has looks deposited like that. Way. That has gone the whole way. And Arshad will have to rethink his. Uh, his I, think, I, I think having stood out there at the interval between innings, it's very, very difficult to bowl from the end that Arshad is bowling as a leg spinner because there's a, a, sure, a, fair, a fair, and a fairly strong breeze mm. against you as well. This one hit straight. It's another four for Brian Dunphy. Dunphy's taking a liking to Arshad's bowling at the moment. 
And that'll bring in a powering ahead here. What's the weather doing, Amanda? Sorry? What's the weather doing? It's threatening some rain here, we're just being informed in the commentary position. Well, that's, that's very short and that's very well hit and that's still travelling. Yes, there's a picture of the Wilville Road gate. That's how far he has hit it. He has cleared the boundary by a long way there. This is being a very expensive over for Arshad. And again, I feel the movement to a match rather than playing on grass. Plus, the rain is now beyond spitting. It is actually raining at this stage. The umpire is perhaps having a chat here. No, I did. There's a change of batsman because you must retire once you go past 34. So Brian, Brian was obviously on... Well, he, tart, tart, quickly, isn't he, he did, yeah. That's his one this year. He's a. Uh, I, I don't know how many runs the chap has scored this year, but with add up all the squads that he's played in and all the teams on Balbriggan that he's played in, I, I'm sure he must be setting records that our club have never seen before. Third batsman in is Addy, one of our up and coming players. Addy again is a 12 year old. Schooled in St. Peter's in Drogheda. You can see the rain coming down now, affecting the pitches. It's driving rain now. I can see out the window for the first time today. I'm delighted to be in the hall. This one plays to the offside. I'm going to run there. The umpires are going to take the bales off and we're going in for some cover. There's too much rain at the moment. Everyone heads to the sidelines. But certainly after that passage of play in the second innings, you'd have to say that Balbriggan will be the happier of the two teams. But yes, uh, at, at this stage, Craig, obviously, but look, we all know cricket. I've watched Balbriggan's first team last week when we were 1 for 1 for 2. And at, that was after 31 overs, and after 41 overs, we were all out for 190. So, it's a strange game, and I would have said to you that it was the strongest middle order I've ever seen for breaking with, but just on the day it didn't fire. There are and just those days when nothing goes right. We've seen cricket torn very, very quickly. But let's hope that the weather relents a little bit. It's a uh, it is overcast, but there's still some brightness in parts of the sky. There we have a picture of it there. Those you can do with wiping the camera of your camera before you really start. So we'll hand you back now to Craig. I'll, I'll just take a, a break. And There's not a lot to commentate on, so when, I think we'll when, both take a break. Yeah, when play resumes, we'll be back with you. We will indeed. Thank so you. until then, thank you for watching, and we'll be back for the conclusion of this cup final as soon as the weather relents. We'll leave you with the pictures.
So just to bring you a quick update on things, the rain is still coming down at an angle of 45 degrees. The ground looks empty, apart from a lone Nile Walsh, who's doing his best to weatherproof the cameras. 
and Battle Brilliant have made a fine start chasing down a winning target of 1-2-2. Two, two. They were 27 for none of four overs. But as we watch the rain come down, we wonder, will this or will the fourth team game later on be, be played? Now, I have to say to Niles credit, he's managed to get down here. He's standing out in the middle of the field at the moment, getting absolutely hosed on as he tries to protect his cameras from this downpour. But he's already said that he won't be covering the fourth 11 game on the junior mat this afternoon. That's if it is on the junior mat. And that's if it does go ahead at all. But for the time being, we'll leave you with the pictures of the rain coming down. You can see what Niall's doing to the camera on that one. Hopefully he'll give that uh, lens a quick wipe. So for the moment, we'll leave you and we'll bring you further updates as we have them. And thank you for tuning in and staying with us through this rain break. As I say, Bell Brigham require 122 from their 20 overs and they've reached 27 for naught. in fact I know they're further on than that because Donkey has had to retire having reached 35 and that's the only change of wicket we've had so far your pictures now being altered as Noel Walsh tries to put a good waterproof wrapping around the camera to stop himself being electrocuted We'll keep an eye on him. If he starts lying on the ground and quivering, we'll go and help him. But for the time being, we'll leave you with just the pictures of the rain coming down on Sydney Parade. Well, for those of you who have hung on, I can tell you that the umpires have called the game off. I don't know if it's to be replayed. It certainly won't be picked up from the same spot again. But that's the game done for today. So thank you very much. I shall leave the pictures of the ground on until my director, producer, makes it back here. But the umpires have called the game and there'll be no awarding of the cup today. Noel Walsh is now out in the middle, getting very wet, picking up his equipment. And his next production will not be the junior pitch. That has been a technological challenge that Noel has once again risen to and met superbly well and I really wish I had a camera on what is a very wet, very cold Niall Walsh. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. This cup final has been cooled off. The rain has not only stopped play, it has ceased play. And that will do you for the day. Here we go, we get a few highlights we had queued up in before we There we go. Off. Once again, that was when the sun was shining. That's a beautiful delivery from Hassan, who saw the end of Ethan Clark, 
That's the first boundary that Pembroke scored today. Just. Another wicket falling. And then that one. Nearly oh, through to the keeper. Keeper obstructing her. Or is that the fielder obstructing just that? Just obstructing the view, but it was a fine catch. So once again, sad news <laughs> to bring you that the... I think that picture sums it up. The game has now been officially called off by the umpires. There will be no further play. And with that the situation, we will say thank you very much for tuning in. And we hope to see you for Niall's next production, which I suspect will be tomorrow. Let's see what the weather's like. Let's see what the weather's like indeed. The fourth eleven are here to this afternoon. If you want to pop on down, bring a raincoat, an umbrella and a pair of Wellingtons. But for now, we'll say thank you very much to Noel Walsh, to Albert Harbour, my co-commentator. And to Craig Senior. And to Craig Senior. Thank you very much and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.